Are you hungry? I know I am. Let's get cracking. What's up guys, my name is Jacob, this is Conscious Cooking, and today we are making leftover burritos, aka leftover burritos. Why are we doing this? I'm going to play a little scene for you guys, a scene that I'm sure you've done yourself, or that you've heard somebody do, or probably both. How is it possible that the fridge is full of food and there's still nothing to eat. Yeah, that sound familiar? I thought it would. We're making leftover burritos. I have some soul. And I'm not talking about, like, me as a person. Soul the fish. S-O-L-E. It's related to flounder. It's a flat fish. Very, very simple musculature. It's a very soft, malleable fish. It's not ideal for tacos. It's just not. But, I have it. It's already made, it's already cooked, it just needs to be heated up. I have it. That's the important part. And I'm going to make leftover burritos. So basically, or leftover fajitas is really more accurate because I'm not going to roll it into a burrito. At least I'm not really planning on it. Aside, the f That's not really the point here though. I just need green peppers and onions to turn soul into a fish taco. I'm going to be using the term taco, fajita, burrito, all that sort of stuff interchangeably because it's just the flavor profile that I'm concerned with. So all I need to do is break down the green peppers and onions into, you know, small thin pieces, like about the width of my finger. Or, well, more like my pinky finger. I want each piece to be about the size of my pinky finger. Um, saute those, cook them down until they're nice and soft and have a nice flavor to them. We're going to add a little bit of cumin, a little bit of paprika, and some salt, of course. And probably some garlic powder, too, just because I like that garlic flavor. Cook those down until they're nice and soft. And just mix everything together. The one thing that I'm worried about with the sole is that, like I said, it falls apart. It is super duper soft. It's, it's like flounder in that regard. It has extremely simple musculature, so it doesn't really, you know, hold together. It's not a firm fish. So it's not particularly ideal for, you know, tacos or burritos, whatever you want to make. The way that I'm going to kind of get around that is by not mixing things together. They're going to be kind of separate when they're in the burrito. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to put the fish down... And then we're going to put the all the other mixers in there and then roll it. This will make it so that the fish will be by itself and you don't have to put it on top of an unstable surface being the green peppers and onions. So, that we're gonna, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go get started. I hope you all have something else to use as your remainder filling, I guess you can call it. All right, folks, so we want to... Saute, sweat, whatever you want to call it. We want to reduce or cook. <sighs> Alright, folks. We want to cook these veggies. It's just, you know, green bell peppers and, you know, yellow slash white onions. This is a non-stick pan, so I'm not worried about it sticking. Add everything in. Add some salt to it. And just stir and make sure it doesn't stick. Shouldn't be that difficult to do. And you're also going to want to break everything apart. I like just using tongs for this. Um, don't put a lid on this. Just, you know, let it cook. Let it ride. And I have no idea how long this is going to take. I almost never make fajitas. But when the onions have a nice good color to them and everything is soft that's when we're done but you know just take your time don't let anything burn and don't let anything stick
All right, folks, it's been like five minutes. I want to add a little more flavor. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of cumin, which is like the ultimate taco spice in my opinion. I'm going to throw in a little bit of paprika. Nothing special, just regular old paprika. I don't need the smokiness for this one. And a little bit of garlic powder. Not much, just a little bit. I just want a little bit of that garlic flavor. We're going to stir this back up together. I'm going to add a little water to the pan to help everything sort of combine. But we'll go back into time lapse now. folks everything is soft enough kill the heat mix it around I guess if you feel like it it's late and we want to get all this off into a foil pouch to rest all right folks I fudged up I don't have burritos I thought that I had some leftover burritos, you know, like burrito tortillas. I don't. I thought I did, I don't. Um, and by the time I was actually recording this, it was like 9 p.m. So I couldn't go out and get more because everything around me is closed. So, no plating portion for this episode. I literally just don't have the stuff to plate with it. I'll obviously show you guys the... You know what? Let's try something different. Just because things didn't go as planned doesn't mean that it's a failure. Perfect example is these leftover burritos. I don't have burritos. I don't. I don't have the tortillas, nor do I have the ingredients to make them because I don't usually keep that type of stuff in the house. I just don't. So, we can just approach this in a different way. Part of working in a kitchen, whether it's professionally or in your own kitchen, is adaptation. You can't give up just because you're missing something. Obviously, if you're missing the main protein or the star ingredient of a dish, it's not going to work because you don't have anything. But if you're missing, you know, just some sort of side thing, something that's not the star, something that's really just added on, you can fix it. It's not that much of an issue. So we're just going to put everything on a plate and eat it that way. This also makes it so that if you have trouble with corn, like I do, or if you have trouble with wheat gluten, like a lot of, like my mother does, this is a better alternative to begin with because now you don't have to deal with the flour which is wheat nor do you have to deal with the corn which is you know corn so does it look the same or will it taste the same no is it gonna be just as good pretty much I just wanted to remind you guys that just because things are different doesn't mean that they're bad and just because you have to make an adjustment doesn't mean it's a failure. 
It's still a completed dish, and it still looks and tastes really good. So, don't sweat it. That's going to be it though. Thank you all once again for watching. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Share this video with your friends. That's going to be it for me though. I'm going to see you all next week with a, you know, properly stocked dish. But, that's going to be in a few days. See you all next week. Bye-bye.